morning viewers and listeners this morning we want to continue with our topic that we began last sunday uh, entitled don't fear jesus is in control now uh, the the world today is undergoing serious stress and fear because of uh, the coronavirus disease but apart from this disease, we have other fears that people are uh, going through. We have people that are going through fear because their families are breaking. We have people that are going through fear because of financial lack, or they don't know what to give their families. They don't know uh, what to do to sustain their lives. We have other people that are going through fear because of other diseases such as cancer um, and even diseases uh, that are incurable. And so apart from what is happening in the world today that has made activities to come to a standstill, <clears throat> we have various forms of fear that the enemy, the devil, has brought uh, to the world. And so um we want to continue that topic and uh remember last sunday we said the enemy the devil acts like a rolling lion and where we read in first peter chapter 5 verse number 8 and we said he is not a lion he is only acting like a lion to bring fear to people and we said the real lion is jesus christ where we read revelation 5 verse number 5 where we said uh, he is from the tribe of Judah, Jesus Christ. When we have our trust in Jesus Christ, we have all reasons not to fear, but to put our faith in him. Now, I want to give a few verses uh, that will build our faith uh, so that we don't fear. And the first verse I want us to read is Philippians chapter number 4, verse 6 to 7. Uh, we read there Philippians chapter number 4. Uh, verse, verse 6 to 7. I read, the Bible says, this is um, King James Version um, authored by Jimmy Swaggart, the new King James Version. The Bible says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with the thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto, unto God. Excuse me, verse number seven. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, Paul went to Philippi and he found the Philippians having uh, various kinds of worries and fears. And he spoke to them this word that he told them, be careful for nothing. Other versions will say, um, do not be anxious when anxiety uh, creeps in somebody's heart and mind that person becomes restless so paul was telling the, the philippians settle he was telling them don't worry and he told them for you not to worry do uh, a few things number one he told them that they should pray to god number two he told them they should offer supplication Supplication is like beseeching God. And number three, he told them to give thanks to God. <clears throat> now, out of these three things, prayer to God, supplication, and giving thanks, he told them, then your hearts will settle. Your minds will settle. When the heart of somebody is not settled, when the mind of somebody is not settled, then those people um, are restless. In other words, they are fearful. So Paul is telling us that instead of um, worrying a lot, we should bring our requests, we should bring our worries, we should bring our cares to God. And so my viewers and my listeners, I know there are so many things that are bringing worries and issues uh, to do with the fear to your life. And this morning, let us uh, hook up with Paul and take our fears, all of them, to God through prayer, through supplication, and through thanksgiving. When we look at our lives in the past, 
there are things that probably made us to worry. And when we took them to God, God took care of all of them. Another verse that I would want us to check uh, at uh, is John chapter number 14, verse 1. The Bible says, if I may paraphrase, Jesus told his disciples, don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and in me. Why was Jesus telling his disciples this? It is because he knew as their leader he was about to be taken to heaven. And he knew when he goes, uh, probably they will start worrying who is going to lead them. Who is going now to be doing the miracles for them. But he told them, don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and also believe in me. Uh, and he also told them, in the book of Acts, you will find Jesus telling them to stay in Jerusalem because after he goes up, he was going to give them the helper, the Holy Spirit. Dear ones, what we need today is the helper that Jesus promised. We need the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is with us, we will be able to surmount all the fears. We will be able to conquer. We will be able to stand against all the fears that the devil uh, brings to the world, that the devil brings to humanity. And therefore, whatever is making you fear, my dear listener, whatever is making you get worried, just present it to God and put your trust in God and don't worry. Uh, now we have another verse that I want us to look, also that shall give us uh, to stand firm amidst things that are bringing us fear today. I want us to read John uh, chapter number 16, verse number 33. We read John 16, 33. That is a verse that uh, is going to give us a lot of encouragement. Again, it is Jesus who was talking to his disciples. This is a time when he was about to be taken up. Uh, and therefore, he told them, uh, John 16, 33, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Jesus was telling his disciples uh, to stand firm. He knew after being taken away, there was to arise great persecution. And they were all to be scattered all over in the world, in the known world then. And therefore he was telling them that uh, uh, the things that he told them, in other words, the preparation that he had given them that was going to be taken up. He was telling them these things because he knew after he is taken up, there was to be persecution. And so he told them, now be of good cheer uh, because I have already overcome the world. The things that are going to, uh, to, 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 to come against you, I have already overcome them. Uh, overcome them. Jesus knew that he had already overcome them because he was about to go to the cross and at the cross he said, it is finished. And therefore, dear one, my listener, my viewers, I am saying that whatever uh, we are facing in the name of uh, issues of life that are difficult, challenges that are coming our way in our families, in our workplaces, in our businesses, all those challenges, Jesus overcame them. And therefore, mine to, uh, this morning is to tell you, be of good cheer, because the Lord Jesus Christ overcame for us all. Now, uh, in all these issues, we have to apply faith. And uh, the other time we defined faith, whereby we read Hebrews chapter number 11, verse 1, where the Bible says that uh, faith is the substance of things opt for, uh, the evidence of things not seen. Therefore, I want to say that um, we must apply faith. We must get faith as something that we can hold because it is the one that gives us hope. It is uh, a substance of things hoped for. And therefore, if any one of us, uh, if any one of my listeners and my viewers is sick and going through a difficult challenge and situation, apply faith and decree and declare uh, in your prayer that you are already uh, you are already uh, settled and uh, sorted out in the issue that you are going through. The book of Job, chapter number 22, verse number 28, the Bible says that a man shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass. And therefore, I want us uh, together now to decree in the name of Jesus Christ that the things that we need 
are going to be done. By faith, they are going to be done in the name of Jesus Christ. And therefore, let us decree things together. And this moment in time, I want us to pray to decree things that are going to take place uh, by faith. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and I declare those that are believing God for their healing, may you receive your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Those that are believing God for peace in their families, in their marriages, I decree peace in your marriage in the name of Jesus Christ. Those that are believing God even for um, their children to be obedient to them, being parents, I decree and I declare, may you children obey your parents as per the word of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Those that do not know how they are going to, uh, to survive because of the curfew in Kenya, because of businesses, I want to decree and declare, God shall open a door, God shall open a window, God shall open a way in a, way, in, in a manner that you shall survive, you shall live war, even amidst the curfew that the government has put. Remember, the government has put this curfew because they are concerned about the citizens, the citizens of this land. We are the citizens of the land and the government loves us. And that is why we need to be obedient to the government in the name of Jesus Christ. As I also make a request even to the governing authorities that um, uh, when the children of Israel used to go for war, they used to have the priests carry the covenant, the Ark of the Covenant in front, and then the soldiers would follow and they would win battles. In this regard, I'm requesting that uh, let the priests be allowed to access the altar because it is in the altar where this battle that is making people uh, not have our freedom in our country uh, be won in the altars in the name of Jesus Christ. And therefore, those in the governing authority, can you review uh, the laws and allow pastors and allow priests to access the altar? There is the power of the altar. Uh, a word spoken from the altar, the altar that has been made specifically for the word of God to be disseminated from there. There is power from the altar. Can these laws be reviewed so that uh, priests can access the altar and the battle will be won soon than later? This corona issue will be won in a divine manner in the name of Jesus Christ. We are hearing that countries like Italy, they have now allowed people to go for prayer, people to access churches to pray. Can we allow people in Kenya, can we allow the priests in Kenya to access the altar? Of course, uh, following the directives given of health, washing their hands, sanitizing their hands, and keeping the distance required, we will obey those uh, directives and we shall petition God and Kenya shall revert back to normal, to normal daily routine in Jesus' name. Now, last Sunday we looked at uh, Matthew chapter number 8, verse number 2, where we saw a leper. A leper who came to Jesus and told Jesus, if you are willing, make me clean. And Jesus told the, the leper, I am willing, be clean. And the leper worshipped Jesus and the leper was made clean. We also saw the issue of uh, the, the centurion servant, where the centurion went to Jesus and he, uh, he asked Jesus to speak a word and uh, his servant would be made whole. And Jesus, uh, seeing the faith of the centurion uh, man, he spoke a word and the servant was healed. Now we are saying that from a distance, God is able to sort out people's issues. And therefore, from where I am, where I am speaking the word of God, I am now speaking a word to somebody. Wherever you are, by faith, may you receive your miracle that you have been desiring to receive from God in Jesus' mighty name. Now, in that Matthew, chapter number 8, verse number 14, we are seeing another issue where Jesus Christ, together with his disciples, they go to the home of Peter, Peter the disciple, who later became an apostle. Now they found the mother-in-law of Peter being sick of fever. And when Jesus saw her sick of fever, he rebuked the fever, and the fever immediately left her. Now, what is this one teaching us? That anybody can have a challenge. 
because this is the mother-in-law of the apostle Peter who was sick of fever. Jesus is in their company and she is sick. But what we need to do and to know is that when we have faith in Jesus, he will sort out our issues. And therefore I am saying, let us have faith in Jesus and let us believe Jesus to sort out the issues that we have and all shall be well. Now, in verse number 16 of the same chapter, the Bible says that that evening, uh, demon-possessed people were brought to him. They were brought to Jesus. And the Bible says that Jesus healed them just with a single command. With a single command, demons left those people that they had possessed. And I want to say that uh, in the same manner, in the same accord, with a single command, because Jesus Christ has given us the believers authority. I speak with authority given by the Lord Jesus Christ. And I decree and I declare them that have issues like those ones, demon possession, receive your freedom in Jesus' name. I decree and I declare that you will be freed right now from whatever bondage that has bound you in Jesus' name. And then Mark chapter 2, verse number 4 up to verse number 12. We are seeing another issue of faith. Four people took their person who was sick, leprosy, who was paralyzed, not leprosy. This person was paralyzed. And the four people had faith that when they took their sick person to Jesus, this person would be healed. They took their paralyzed man to Jesus, but they could not access Jesus because of the crowd. So what did they do? They climbed the house. They went to the top of the roof. They removed uh, whatever uh, was covering the house and they lowered their person direct to where Jesus was. When Jesus saw their faith, the Bible says he healed the paralyzed man. Now, this person was healed because of the faith of other people. And I am saying this, you could be having your people that are in trouble, that are sick, that are in problems, and they don't have faith. But you yourself, you have faith. And as a result of your faith, you can stand on the gap. You can stand in the gap and plead on their behalf and God will heal them. And therefore, as a result of the faith that you have, my viewer, my listener, you are listening to me. You have your people that are already in bondage. This person was in bondage of paralysis, but he had people who had faith. I know you have faith. By your faith, may this person that is in that bondage be freed in Jesus' name. There are people who cannot sleep because of bad dreams. We are people who have rocked their families because of drunkenness. We are people who have rocked their, uh, their, their jobs, who have destroyed their businesses because of drug addiction. We are people whose marriages are broken because of immorality. All these are bondages. And as a result of your faith, I want to stand with you and declare together with you, just as Job has told us, that a man shall declare a thing and it shall happen. I decree freedom for your people who are bound by different bondages. I decree freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. May your marriage be restored in Jesus' mighty name. May that sickness leave your people, leave you in Jesus' name. May your business be restored in Jesus' name. May you get that employment that you've been yearning for in Jesus' name. May you do well in that school, in that college, in Jesus' name. By faith, we shall overcome every kind of fear. Fear uh, is a spirit. It originates from the devil. And every kind of a spirit that is of fear, I bind you, I rebuke you, and I bring you down under my feet in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we worship you this moment. As we conclude uh, this message, Dear Lord God, I come before you in prayer. And I pray right now, rebuking every spirit of fear from my listeners, rebuking every spirit of fear from my viewers, rebuking every spirit of fear from everybody who is listening to me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We shall exercise, exercise faith. The Bible says, what seems impossible with a man, it is possible with God. When Mary was given the news that she shall bear the Savior, she did not know how this would happen, but she finally declared, let, let God, uh, your will be done. It was done, and the Lord Jesus Christ was born through virgin, 
Virgin Mary. We know the young uh, rich ruler, he went to Jesus and he was asking Jesus, what can I do so that I may enter heaven? Jesus told him what to do. Finally, on his own, he was told to sell his property. He did not do it. He went uh, forth being indignant, being angry, because that is where his uh, all hope was in his wealth. Finally, Peter asked Jesus, then, uh, who shall be saved? Then Jesus told them that whatever is impossible with man, it is possible with God. I want to tell my viewers and my listeners, whatever seems impossible with you, it is possible with God. And I decree and I declare, may it be possible right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you receive your miracle this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah Father, because you have done it. May your name be exalted. May your name be glorified. Thank you, Father, because the spirit of fear will never continue intimidating your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.